It's showtime, folks. Enjoy the show. A fine Saturday top of the morning to you. <laughs> I'm Andy Nelson. Mondo. And I'm P. Wright. <laughs> Really leaning in on this stolen identity <laughs> list today early. You got to kick it off right, man. Kick oh, it off right. Oh, Andy. How are you, uh, how are you holding up? You doing okay? I'm doing good. Doing good. Yeah. We have no uh, video today. For those who are wondering, we know the video is not on the live stream for um, our, our patrons. We're sorry about that. I'm bedcasting this morning, and I just don't want to show my bedroom. That's all. <laughs> And so I, I, we have uh, guests in my, my office and studio becomes the guest room, and thus I have been ousted from it. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. So it's just, it's me and the dog. We know where everybody else's importance lies. That, <laughs> well, it's, I noticed you're not curled up if, in the foot of my bed, If they were Andy. fans of the show, right. they would do what's right. <laughs> they would have already been out of the office listening to it on the hi-fi. That's right. On the hi-fi. On the hi-fi round the fireplace. I think there's only one bit of entertainment news this week. Uh, and that is, of course, that Spider-Man has made peace between the major studios. Money talks, baby. Money talks. <sighs> Andy. I, um... But think of all the money. Think of all the money. Think, think of this Tom poor, Holland. Think of, think of these four, poor Georges. Or what's on the million dollar <laughs> bill? I, I don't know. What's on the million dollar bill? Is there a million dollar bill? I don't know. Bill, what's the Andy? largest bill is there is? Is there a million dollar bill? See, is there a million dollar bill? Yes, the Google, I'd like to see is the largest that. denomination. Oh, there is, however, but the highest a value is the currently in production is just the hundred dollar bill. There is a set, a gag set of hundred million dollar bills that you can buy. They they're printed on a high quality printing press. Mm. Uh, no, you it's a one million dollar bills. Yes, it is one million dollar bills. And who's on it? The Statue of Liberty. And I, I want to say again, this is a gag. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> don't go shopping for it. Yes, no, please don't. The $100,000 uh, bill, though, uh, when it was in print, uh, it was never actually in circulation. It can't legally be held, but they did print it in 1934. Uh, and I guess they decided, you know what? I don't know why we're printing this. We just got out of this <laughs> depression. Put Nobody's this in gonna... your wallet. <laughs> uh, but Woodrow Wilson was the president who was on the front. And here's a here's an odd thing. The person on the ten thousand dollar bill. Do you know who this person is? Salmon P. Chase. I don't. Who is Salmon P. Chase? He was a U.S. politician and jurist who served as the sixth Chief Justice of the U.S. He also served as the twenty third Governor of Ohio. And in the U.S. Senate and served as the 25th United States. Here's the reason. Secretary of the Treasury. You know mm, what? Shrouded in controversy. <laughs> I ran the Treasury. Put me on the $10,000 bill. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to only be paid in $10,000 bills, please. <laughs> oh, remind me to add that note to my invoices. <laughs> <laughs> right. Only accepting ten thousand dollar denominations. This is this is smart. More salmons. More salmon. <laughs> sweet, sweet salmons. <laughs> Gotta make the salmons. <laughs> oh man, good stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway, back to Tom Holland <laughs> ably negotiating <laughs> the return mm. of Spider Man to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the most interesting part to me that we do have him back, but uh, we also have him back. And uh, the Godfather, Kevin Feige, is producing mm. the third Homecoming movie. And he will be back in at least one uh, MCU movie, uh, likely Avengers 5. That is what I understand. Is that clear to you so far? It's, yeah, yeah I mean, it's all clear-ish. As clear as yeah, there's they nothing make clear it this about point. this yeah. whole thing. No, it's absolutely it, it's nonsense. But I stand relieved. I know you didn't care at all. You felt like this is the universe bending at the will of these big companies, and the movies will be great. Whatever. I cared a great deal. <laughs> I feel a little bit vindicated. 
Just going to say. Yes. I, uh, and yeah. I'm sure as many people do. Well, and it sounds like John story. Watts I, is actually going to return as the director. That's also sounding like it's going to yeah, yeah. be part of that it's, whole it's, deal. So It's just smart. It's just ridiculous that we got, you know, we got so embroiled in this nonsense. And I imagine uh, that was part of the game, right? I imagine that was part of whatever negotiating tactic was to make sure that this this was public enough to see which way the wind blew. And now we know. Yeah. People were upset. Yeah. yeah. They didn't take it. People were more upset than somebody expected and exactly as upset as someone else expected. And thus the boardroom piece was made. You know what they could have uh, just done is is they could have concluded the storyline that they started in in the two amazing Spider-Mans. Well, they could <laughs> they could have. They also, uh, I think you know, I think it was uh, Blot in the Discord who said, "How much do you want to bet they just kill Peter Parker in the next movie so they don't have to deal with this <laughs> at all anymore and just let Sony have their way with Miles Morales?" Right. <laughs> Uh, they are going all in on the Spider Verse, though. Over at Sony, hearing word that uh, there are all kinds of other Spider characters that they're making movies about, um, which you know that's great. Let's do it. Yeah, and and Morbius is coming, so I mean, you know, it's, there'll yeah. be a, a nice variety of of uh, things to happen. So, plus plus Kevin Feige apparently is going to be making a Star Wars movie. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about that. Mm -hmm. That'll be a, an interesting, you know, it, I I saw that and my instant thought was, well, they've done a lot of Star Wars comics. I wonder if there is a storyline, some story thread through the comics somewhere that he has convinced them, you know what, let me take this and that'd be a great movie. And I wonder if they said, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what, you're right. I'm very curious. I am very curious about that, too. It's uh, w w the word that I read was it's going to be likely more Star Trek than Star Wars, which, you know, for a guy like me, that's that's probably pretty good. I, I don't know what that means. I feel like that's a that's a, a weird thing to to say after just seeing this announcement. But I'm very much into it. And uh, I like Kevin Feige. I like the MCU quite a bit as we do around these parts. And uh, so I am one of those that is uh, guardedly optimistic that he's going to be he's going to be great. I, I, I'm very curious about it. I'm curious to see how the whole thing goes down. I'm just curious to see where they go with the whole Star Wars universe after the conclusion of this this final trilogy. And, you know, are they going to you know, just go all over the place and do a bunch of different things? I heard that, you know, they actually were thinking about doing something with the Han Solo storyline again. So yeah, who knows? I'm curious. Joker Premier disinvites interview press from Hollywood Red Carpet. Well, Joker, that's kicking up quite a bit of controversy right now. Have you heard the other element of the whole Joker thing? Let, let's talk about it. Yeah, Tell that, me what you want to talk about. Well, there have been uh, 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 warnings about uh, potential mass shootings at screenings of the uh, playing of Joker in theaters. And the military, the U.S. Uh, military actually came out and told soldiers to identify escape routes and and run, hide and fight if a shooting uh, occurs. How to shelter in place if you can't move. Uh, it's uh, really <laughs> kind of like, hmm, that's a little creepy. I don't know how much I want to jump out and see Joker right away. It, exactly. Who's, yeah. Who do you think is saying at the studio, you know, it would be a great day and date streaming release? Joker. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> let's put it out on Netflix right let's, away. Let's go ahead and get people actually watching the movie and, and see what they think of it. I, it is, um, uh, it, you know, they're, they're working on it. They've uh, hand in hand with this. No interview press is, uh, you know, the red carpet is comprised of, um, of, for the Los Angeles premiere is comprised of photographers only. And here they say it. Los Angeles Police Department is aware of public concerns and the historical significance associated with the premiere of Joker. Yeah. Well, there are, there are no credible threats in the Los Angeles area. The department will maintain a high visibility around theaters for exactly the kind of stuff you're talking about. It sounds like the, you know, on the dark web, they were, um, it was the Texas law enforcement 
saw some of these things targeting yeah. an unknown movie theater. They don't know if it's in Texas, but uh, and then you know, of course, a uh, uh, I think a British reporter asked uh, Joaquin Phoenix in an interview if the film could inspire violent acts. He walked out of the interview. Um, family members of the Aurora. Uh, theater shooting they have asked warner brothers to donate money that they earn from the film to gun control causes the film is not going to be shown in that theater i it's it's really interesting how this film has kind of hit this this point in our culture that is really colliding with kind of um movie going and the uh the potential violence that can come from it so I still really want to see the movie, but uh, wow, I'm I'm curious to see what's going to be happening with all of this now. The interesting thing about the movie, what I've heard, having not seen it, is that they they successfully pull off um, a Walter White style transformation, right, where they give this guy who ends up being the antagonist a truly sympathetic origin story, right? They they take him from being the sub, this uh, a, a whelp. And they make him the one who knocks, right? And and that is something that is is giving a lot of people pause now, in a way that that um, you know they didn't years ago. And so uh, I'm I, I share the anxiety because I run high on that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm with you. I really want to see it. Yeah, yeah. I guess we'll just uh, have to wait and see how all this plays out. Which is here's another one that's getting. Uh, maybe we can see this instead. What do you think? Uh, New York Film Review says uh, Scorsese's The Irishman is incredible, coldly enthralling triumph. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Long form knockout quote: a majestic mob epic with ice in its veins. It's a film I think a lot of us wanted to see from Scorsese, a stately, ominous, stuck-in-your-breath summing up not just a drama, but a reckoning, a vision of the criminal underworld that's rippling with echoes of the director's previous mob films, but that also takes us someplace bold and new. Andy, how excited are you about this movie? I'm super excited for all three hundred three hours and 29 minutes of it. It's going to be a, <laughs> a beefy, beefy thing to sit through, but one I'm very excited about. Yeah, it's already at an he's... 8 out of 10 on ye old yeah. IMDb. Yeah. Yes. Extraordinary performances by uh, uh, Pesci and De Niro and Al Pacino. What an incredible coming uh, together here. I'm very excited about this movie. Yeah, definitely. What You got anything else uh, hot on your list you want to talk about? I think that was pretty much the news I had. We want to yeah. nail these, these trailers. Mm, yes. And Speaking you... of... You know, <laughs> mistaken identity movies. <laughs> well, you got the A24, so you got the... I, I do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what... Uh, uh, let's see. What what was the name of my movie? Uncut Gems, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you out. <laughs> I already forgot. Well, it's because I picked it so early in the week. I was thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock it in for my list this week. I want to make sure that I am... Um, <laughs> First, this is another one. Speaking of movies that are getting some early, uh, interesting, positive press, um, you know, I, I think you and I uh, agree that when Adam Sandler does something that's not in his usual Adam Sandler wheelhouse, there is room to be excited about his performance. And then I, no, just, I don't know if we agree about that. I think we do. No, I think I, we I do. Think I, you, think you, I remember you, you saying that. I don't. <laughs> this is you. Okay. I, I really you enjoy that. Adam Sandler. <laughs> I'm moving. I'm moving my hand. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that that sometimes it just comes out. It just it's it's just not good. And then he'll end up doing something uh, a, a little bit more uh, subdued or serious. And I find myself just really. I, I find his performance really appealing. Well, here we go. Uncut Gems uh, is a comedy crime drama uh, in which. Uh, Adam Sandler plays, uh, you know, a, a jewelry store owner and and a dealer who gets caught up with it with uh, uh, some it looks like some sort of sharks or the mob and needs to raise a bunch of money real real fast. It is one of those uh, performances, at least judging from the trailer, that is uh, a unique place for Sandler to go. Uh, you know, as an actor and. Uh, 
his his face fits it for me. It fits like uh, uh something that looks like this is going to be this this is going to be a nice home for him uh comes from directors uh, Benny Safty and Josh Safty uh written by uh, Ron Bronstein and uh, the Safties uh, you know what they did uh, they did good time mm-hmm. you remember the good time that was actually really quite good uh with uh, uh Robert Pattinson really locked in his uh, Batman casting i'm sure <laughs> In good time. <laughs> uh, a- anyhow, um, this uh, Uncut Gems, it looks like a movie that's going to do some interesting things for Adam Sandler. That is my hope. It's already uh, cruising in at 8.2 on the IMDb six-star uh, scale, and that gives me reason to be enthusiastic. Tell me at least, let's, uh, let's just say I take your fabrication here, your lies, your fabulous lies that you have never said anything positive about Adam Sandler. (laughs) But I know, you and I both know that you actually love some of his work. And let's take your position as gospel today. I'd like to... Tell me you're not intrigued by this movie. Before I do, which I I get to, tell me what films of Adam Sandler's you say, oh, Andy loves that one. The (laughs) Waterboy. You can do it. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not saying I haven't seen Adam Sandler's films. I'm saying in general, I am not a fan of his work. Pick pixels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adam. You know, I'm thrilled that he's like Woody Allen found the right uh, market to target with his crappy movies. He makes it just the right budget. So he gets to keep cranking out crap. Great. I'm happy for him. And he's got his audience for it. And I'm sure they love it. I, uh, I have seen a few that I've 50, liked. 50 first dates was great. 50 first dates, uh, was great. I did like the wedding singer. Um, I feel like that may be it. I'm not the, one of the people who have any fondness for punch drug love. I freaking hate it. See, I am. Uh, yeah. And and that's another one. And that's what it is actually that movie that made me look at at trailers like The Cobbler and think, oh, this is something that might be interesting for us to talk about. Mm-hmm. Right. This is an interesting, more subdued performance. And, um, you know, unfortunately, and then he goes and screws it all up for you. R- right. Right. Uh, uh, you know, and Jack and Jill, I know, I know you're really you had high hopes for that one. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with the Zohan. Yeah, no, I, I get it. No, I mean, honestly, right, I've given him, I've given him a try. Story. Like Spanglish, you know, okay, I tried it. Yeah. I wasn't very happy with it, but, but 50 First Dates, absolutely. I think that's a great one. Yeah. Um, I do uh, agree with you. I think the Safdie brothers are an interesting pair of filmmakers. I enjoyed Good Time. I had uh, some problems. There's a, a character introduced uh, midway through the film who I think takes in a direction that didn't work for me. But on the whole, really enjoyed the film, enjoyed the performances. Definitely one worth checking out. That's largely the reason I am curious about this one, because I I do feel like, you know, take Adam Sandler out of the Adam Sandler equation. And I feel like, you know, there's some possibilities here. And just the fact that it's the Safdie brothers, I'm already curious about it. So um, I, I don't feel like watching the trailer that it's just another punch drunk love. And so, you know, it gives me hope. It gives it it piques my curiosity enough to make me want to see how this one is going to play out. And plus, Adina Menzel is playing his wife. And I'm like, this is cool. I, I love that she's in a movie like this. So I'm I'm and it's the same curious. thing. I mean, she just looks absolutely hand to glove perfect in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a it's got actually a really interesting cast. And so I'm very curious to see how this one plays out and to see what Adam Sandler can do with it. Here's the thing that I think is uh, fascinating for me. It's their release window. What is this movie doing releasing on Christmas Day in the U.S., <laughs> <laughs> December 25th? Uh, we get limited release uh, the week prior, December 13th in the U.S. It's, uh, it, it, hits, uh, it hit Toronto International Film Festival on September 9th, and that's where we started seeing some uh, early Telluride before and, that, uh, yeah. Tell, Telluride before that, yeah. Uh, so, you know, building a little bit of momentum looks like an interesting thing because it is probably a movie that uh, I'm, I'm going to wager you're going to like it. I, I think it's probably one that most of Adam Sandler's uh, audience will not. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> I would, I would bet you're probably right. 
<laughs> in 10 years, you and I are going to have a conversation about, hey, Andy, remember how much you loved Uncut Gems? That's going to make you want to see this Adam Sandler project. So I look forward to this movie setting the bar. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it will. All right. Sure it will. All right. What's yours? My uh, speaking of Christmas movies, <laughs> I, I of course did pick another Christmas movie, uh, Noel, which uh, you know I'm honestly not too sure about this one. This is um, a new film. Mark Lawrence is directing it, uh, wrote and directed it. Bill Hader and Anna Kendrick, along with Shirley, Shirley MacLaine, uh, turn up in this one, and uh, you know a bunch of other people: Julie Haggerty, Billy Eichner. Uh, Michael Gross pops up as Elder Elf Abe, El- Elder Elf Abe. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. I think it's really, I'm really <laughs> curious. Uh, Anna, Anna Kendrick and Bill Hader are Santa's kids, and Nick is in line to take over as Santa Claus. But uh, he kind of uh, is getting cold feet, and uh, she says, "You just need to take a break. Just take, get some air, and go out." And of course, he skips town, and and uh, she has to go find him. Where do they end up? You ask. <laughs> he goes to Phoenix, Arizona, and that's where she has to go <laughs> track him down where it looks like he's teaching yoga. Um, That's largely why I picked this, because this is something that was filmed here. I knew people who uh, worked on it when they were filming it. And uh, because of that, I just, uh, I thought, you know what, it's, uh, it, I don't think it looks that great, but uh, just kind of throwing it in there for the local crowd. Uh, that's why I went with Noel for my trailer. Well, I think you're being too hard on this. And I'll tell you why. When I first saw the trailer for Elf, I thought I laughed at the trailer and I thought, well, that's going to be dumb. And it's become a holiday staple Mm -hmm. at our house. I got the same kind of feeling watching this trailer. This is going to be dumb. But when (laughs) when Billy Eichner says, I'm in IT and loving it. But this is this is going to be this is going to be great. She blows out the yoga candle. That's a big deal in here. I mean, there were all kinds of great little uh, just the gags I thought were reminiscent of this guy. I think it's going to be funny. I really do. I think it's going to be one that you're going to want to watch back to back with Elf. And uh, I hope I'm right. I hope it's going to be a double feature of Uncut Gems. And uh, (laughs) well, and that's the thing with these sorts of movies is. You're making a Christmas movie. There's a very good possibility you are going to be making a new Christmas classic that people will play yes. all the time because it becomes a family Enormous favorite responsibility. Sort of and so, mm-hmm. and I know there's, you know, it's a dime a dozen nowadays. I think uh, Lifetime is, you know, re- planning on releasing a new Christmas movie each day of December or something crazy. Like they're just cranking out Christmas movies. It's insane. Um, but you know what, Mark Lawrence, I mean, he did Miss Congeniality. He did Two Weeks Notice. These are yep. movies that, while I may not necessarily love, I did have a good time with them. You know, I found them enjoyable enough. So uh, so we'll see. We'll see. This right. uh, is going to be opening. It's actually pre-Christmas. It's going to be releasing November 12th here in the States. So uh, a little early for uh, the holidays, but it'll kind of get everybody warmed up for the spirit. But it gets to... One of the uh, interesting things that final uh, title placard on the video says it's going to be uh, streaming on Disney Plus. Mm, yes, right. And it has all the, the weird logo parade. Uh, <laughs> Disney, Marvel, yeah. National Geographic. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought it was uh, that's interesting. So you're going to be able to watch it right on your home hi-fi talk box. Yeah, Disney just needs to uh, take over Warner Brothers and then they can play Joker right afterward. <laughs> See, there you go. Ooh. That would be a smart business deal. All right. Okay. So uh, you want to do a little uh, unmoderated re-ranking? We should. Let's do it while Steve's not around. <laughs> Steve's not here. All right. Yeah, we're going to do our, uh, on our Saturday matinees, we'll throw in a little, some flick chart re-ranking and just see if things shift at all, up or down. And uh, we'll do uh, about 10 or so. So first up, we have Predestination or Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Predestination. Predestination, please. Easy pick. We both liked that one. And that, uh, come on, flick chart, that held steady at Spot 101. Next up, Never Let Me Go, one of our speakeasy episodes, versus The Spanish Prisoner. Well, Spanish Prisoner. Uh, Well, the Never Let Me Go, please. (laughs) 
See, now we need Steve already. <laughs> yes. Well, he'll inevitably we- say, well, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we're going to do this dumb rock, paper, scissors again? I guess so. All right. Here we All go. Right, here we go. One, One two, two, three. Three. Scissors. Rock. Oh, man. I crush you. Never Let Me Go held steady at 120 on our chart. We got a little Tom Hanks v. Tom Hanks action here. Forrest Gump versus Splash. Forrest Gump. I will take the Gump, but boy, do I love Splash. That Forrest Gump held steady at 135. Trading Places. Or the adventures of Baron Munchausen. The Baron. Yeesh. They both have things I like. They both have things I don't like. But yeah, I'll go with Baron Munchausen. Also, Baron Munchausen went from 309 to 107. Whoa. (laughs) That'll be one that bounces around for a while now. Yeah. Because I don't think it should be quite so high. But I don't think trading places should have been quite so high. All right, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, or E.T., the extraterrestrial. Oh, E.T. E.T., for sure. E.T. held steady at number seven. Speaking of sevens, The Magnificent Seven, the remake from 2016, versus Seven. Seven. That's a lot of sevens. That is a lot of seven. (laughs) I will take the latter seven. Yes, seven. From Fincher, held steady at number six. Thoroughly Modern Millie. Versus A Star is Born, 1937. Star is Born. I'm going to say A Star is Born as well. Star is Born held steady at 211 on our chart. Zero Dark 30 or Thief. I'm going to take Zero Zero Dark Dark. 30. Yeah, Zero Dark 30 here. Held steady at 94. Robin and Marion from our last series versus Rebel Without a Cause. Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah, I'll take Rebel Without a Cause. Held steady at 147. Judo or The Night of the Hunter. Ooh, boy. Two wow. really good films. Wow. Uh, I'm going to take The Night of the Hunter, though. That judo was beautiful. And it really was. Yeah, okay. I'm going to give you uh, Love Hate. Night of the Hunter went from 235 to 118. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, Voyager, or one of your favorites, Pete, blindness. Oh, blindness almost caused me to stop watching movies. <laughs> now, Voyager for me. Yes, now, Voyager. <laughs> okay, held steady at 332. A Star is Born, the 2018 remake, versus Nine Queens. Ooh, two really fantastic yeah, films. I'm going to go with A Star is Born. Yeah, me too, but man, Nine Queens. Stars Born went from 53 to 38. Mm. That's our third jump. Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist versus Detroit. Absolutely, Nick and Nora. Yeah, Nick and Nora. Nick and Nora went from 297 to 286. A little hop. And for our last one, we have We're No Angels, the original, versus Ronin. Ronin. Definitely Ronin. Ronin held steady at 129. All right. So that was, did you say we have three I think we ended up having out of 10 there. Three or four yeah. changes, yeah. So. I was just going to say, it surprises me just how m- many films don't move. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, you never know when you're doing your rankings what's going to, yeah. you know, be hitting your movie, so. Okay, I like it. Yeah. All right, Andy. It's good to keep doing this, shake things up a little bit on our chart. Let's Let's do the lists. Okay, so uh, for this week, we re- we released our final Robin Hood episode, Robin Hood from Ridley Scott uh, in 2010. And with that, we put up on our Show Talk channel over on Discord the options for our list this fine Saturday morning. Battles on the Beach, Stolen Identities, or Cleverly Hidden Documents. It was a close race between stolen identities and cleverly hidden documents. And so I threw a vote in and went with what I thought would be easier, stolen identities. <laughs> and that's where we landed. <laughs> uh, okay, Andy. I, I left last week feeling bad. I felt bad because I know what you wanted of me. <laughs> you too. I do, and I I didn't pull through, and I was a little bit angsty about it. I was frustrated about this so-called flick chart crime. <laughs> and so I'd like to open with a little bit of a stretch pick. 
but, oh. but it is also uh, throwing you in particular a bone. Wow. I don't even remember what happened last week, so I'm thrilled to relive this memory. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> it is Woody Allen's 1983 uh, film, uh, <laughs> Zelig. <laughs> uh, okay. I got to nice. I'll get it on the list. I'll do it every once in a while. That's fine. It's it's it, it, about this. It's a mockumentary and I thought it was funny and uh I thought uh I thought Woody Allen actually did a good job and it's, it's a mistaken identity parade. Mostly he's just a, a sick man. <laughs> <laughs> who takes over identities of those who are near him. I kind of feel uh, a an affinity to the character a little bit. Um, don't put me in a room of exclusively uh, uh, British people because I will be shamelessly attempting my British accent at any given moment throughout the our period together. It, it's not great. So That's hilarious. anyhow. Z like 1983. It was funny. It was shot in a really interesting way. It's in, uh, it, it's mostly in that uh, kind of, it, it's a newsreel style thing. So it's, it was shot in that sort of 30s, 20s and 30s era kind of uh, film reel, black and white. It's interesting to look at. I enjoyed it. Have you seen it? Yeah. It's actually, I think, a really interesting uh, cinematic experiment. So yeah. I, um, good. It, it's one that definitely piques my curiosity in his works. And, uh, uh, it's not one that I feel like rewatching, um, but it is one that I uh, said, you know, that was a really interesting movie. Yeah. Good. So I'm good glad. Day. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you're glad. Yes. For my first one, I'm going with uh, a case of literal stolen identities. In this case, it's a double whammy because the good guy still is the, or the bad guy still is the good guys. And then the good guy goes and steals the bad guys. <laughs> it is, of course, <laughs> Face Off, John Woo, 1997. Uh, with John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. And how fun is this movie, especially when uh, they are playing each other? And they have clearly a lot of glee in doing this. Uh, this movie worked really well for me. I had so much fun with this movie. I haven't seen it in ages. I don't know how well it holds up, but um, it is very John Woo. It is uh, full of doves and stylized action sequences and uh, just kind of all of the stuff that John Woo is known for all sorts of crazy stunts and gunfire and all that great great fun stuff it's a it's a fun movie I have a great time with it face off my first choice I think that's a great pick and I think it's a great pick because that movie it's nonsense never like I mean it's a nonsense movie but John Woo keeps it like pumping so fast you just never have time to stop and think about it it takes it takes a long time after the movie's over to to realize what you just saw and realize that you were just beaten over the head by just nonsense. <laughs> uh, but it's really, really fun to watch. I loved it. It is. I'm, I'm surprised you. it's not a steal. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not a steal. Not a steal. I don't know what to say about that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, tell me what your number my, your number two is. My number two is another one. It's one of the, uh, I don't know, I, I find that when I talk about the catalog of this group's films, uh, that it is, uh, it, it's one that is met with more challenges, let's say, uh, than, than some of their others. It is a Monty Python film. It is, of course, Life of Brian, uh, in which Brian... <laughs> is born <laughs> born in a stable right next to uh the sweet baby Jesus <laughs> and his, his whole movie is a mistaken identity as he's mistaken for the Messiah. Uh and uh by the time it ends, as he's crucified singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, I think it is uh it, it is a movie that uh from time to time becomes my anthem. Uh, I deeply enjoyed uh, Life of Brian. I thought it was great. It is not. Uh, it, it is not as good as um, you know uh, the Holy Grail for me, but it is right up there. Really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a very funny movie. Nineteen seventy nine. That's a good one. Very good. <laughs> my second choice. I'm uh, jumping way back uh, in my way back machine, going back to the forties. And I'm looking at Charlie Chaplin and the great dictator. 
of course, here we have his Jewish barber who uh, gets uh, amnesia and ends up uh, a barber in a ghetto, and, or he's he's a soldier, ends up as a barber in the ghetto, and uh, somehow accidentally ends up being mistaken for the dictator Adenoid Hinkle, and a very Hitler-esque sort of character. And it's, you know, it's Charlie Chaplin, and he's clearly having a lot of fun with it. I have a great time with it. It's a it's a fun film, and uh, yeah, I just you know it's it's one that's worth talking about. It definitely um, you know wears its uh, wears its message on its sleeve a little bit, but you know what? It's okay. I think that it ends up coming across pretty nicely. Uh, so that's my second pick. I knew you dictator. were going to pick this. This would have been a steal had I not been so sure uh, <laughs> that you were going to pick it after your Chaplin series. Mm. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a great choice great choice yeah definitely yeah. good film uh my final pick i feel like we're busting through these uh but my final pick is one that i i think we might have i might have picked it before but since when has that stopped us uh it is the 2006 josh hartnett vehicle <laughs> okay oh okay not what i thought you were gonna go with uh lucky number slevin Lucky oh, okay. number Slevin. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, it, it's a completely underrated, uh, like mob, organized crime, uh, assassination crime flick. It's got an incredible cast. Hartnett's great. Morgan Freeman, Ben Kingsley, Stanley Tucci, Lucy Liu, Bruce Willis. Uh, it, it's a it's a great cast. Uh, Slevin Hartnett's character is actually. Uh, he's actually mistaken. Uh, his identity is mistaken twice back to back as he's kidnapped and and uh, uh, accused by opposing gangs. And I had a just a rocking good time with this movie. And it's got a dumb name, and uh, that's okay because it's still worth seeing. American, um, what is what do they call it here? The cattle. They're they're categorized as an American neo noir crime thriller. I'll take that. Paul McGuigan. Uh, uh, it's one that I saw, by, uh, yeah, and don't remember. See, but I know I saw it, and I know I enjoyed it. I just don't remember a thing about it. It's worth seeing again. I enjoyed yeah. it. It's fun movie. Lucky number eleven. Dumb name. Well, for my final pick, I'm going with the film that I worked on, and I feel like I'm cheating a little bit by doing this. But it's a documentary, and uh, it, but it's I think it's uh, which is rare to for me to kind of throw onto a list, but. I think it's a really interesting, compelling story, and people should check it out. It's called The Imposter, and it is about a confidence man who um, he was kind of, he would play other people. And this is this French guy who finds this, this uh, finds out about this dead or missing kid from Texas and tells people that he's him. And he... Um, you know, he's, uh, I think he's, the kid had been missing for like three or four years. And so he, his family wasn't quite sure, but he looked kind of like him. And, you know, they said he was beaten a lot and it's, it's a really compelling story, but he totally, his family believes it takes him back in and he lives with them for uh, a long time before everything kind of uh, comes out. Um, a really interesting story. And, and, you know, the mystery is what really happened to this kid um, who he ended up uh, portraying. Really interesting movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was kind of involved in some of the dramatic reenactment portions that uh, took place in, in Texas and the FBI and all that. So um, it's a, it's definitely a film worth checking out. Uh, Barton Layton directed it, and this was back in 2012. So The Imposter. That's awesome. I don't think, I'm not sure if I've ever even seen it. Seems like I've... Oh, you definitely should watch I know. that one. Okay, well, that's on the list. Uh, this was a this was an interesting list. I'm surprised at some of the films you didn't pick. Well, I have some backups. I I had Dave, which I'm sure yep. was going to be on your list. Absolutely, so <laughs> Ivan uh, Reitman. <laughs> yeah, uh, Summersby, which seemed like an obvious one in context of stolen identities. Yep. yep. Um, or is it? And then, of course, the last one I wanted to throw in was Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol. Just the the part where uh, Cruz plays the uh, the Russian guy and breaks into the Kremlin. Uh, I thought that was pretty fantastic. What about Catch Me If You Can, man? Well, that was another one that I was I was debating. But I'm like, is he stealing identities or is he just pretending he's somebody? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm pretending I'm a doctor. Yes. I'm pretending I'm a pilot. So I was like, I don't know if there's okay. an actual 
person's identity that he's specifically stealing. What about uh, Talented Mr. Ripley was another one that was on my uh, my list? Eh, I would have had to have been really uh, needy to end up putting that one yeah, on my list. Yeah. I thought it was a really interesting movie, but it's definitely not. And the of course, The Net. Never seen it. <laughs> okay, Steve. And I'm okay if it stays that way. Yeah. You probably what about the net 2.0? <laughs> Maybe you should start with that one. <laughs> All right. So what are we doing uh, this week? How are we going to possibly come up with, with choices? next week well okay i the first one i think is obvious so we're we're kickstarting our our uh dave cronenberg series and uh, we're starting off with shivers we're going through some of his um early films shivers through dead ringers and this one i think right away we can say films that take place in one building Got it. I think that's that's a good one. Bit, does it have to be place. a building or a location? Are we specific about locations, or because that would take away, you know, films like uh, that take place exclusively on airplanes or ships? How about yeah, one location? One I location think is fine. Okay, great. Okay. Um. Well, do we start with um great um parasites? <laughs> Like great parasite creatures. <laughs> sure, I'm sure we can come up with uh, things. Okay, because next week it's um, going to so... be great proboscises. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do we want to? Um, so specifically, as parasites, I'm assuming that it's something that gets into a human body or somehow. Yeah. Okay, so so we got great parasites. All right, great I like movie it. parasites. I'm very excited about that one already. <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't thought it through, but now that I'm thinking it through, I'm very excited about it. Okay, um, I I wonder. And let's see. We we have ma like mob like mobs mob mentality. Yes, we wouldn't want to isolate that to great sex mobs. <laughs> Um, why wouldn't we? why not <laughs> uh i think um there's there's something about that i the other one that i think would be too hard for me to uh to articulate is something about how the the thing everybody's scared of is not something people should be scared of uh oh i don't, I don't quite know where to begin but it was a central frustration i had with this movie yeah, that's kind of a tricky yeah. one. That's like, you know, genre films that uh aren't don't quite fit the genre yeah, as much right. as they should, but right. All right. So I does that that actually gives us three, right? Mobs. Yeah, I don't know about that one though. You don't that's know like about an that? odd Yeah, I was gonna be with your mob one though. Oh. So just mobs? Great <sighs> mob seems, mob that mentalities. Seems really broad. Well, it does, but I mean, you know, how many mobs I mean, I'm assuming it's not like just, well, gosh, I can't, I don't know if we can do that because I'm going to say not zombies, but this film kind of does turn everybody yeah, into right. zombies. Kind of, but kind of not because it's not completely, doesn't completely follow through with its logic. Um. Okay, so maybe not mob, mobs then. Yeah. Uh, well, unless there's a way we can narrow it down. Islands? Island locations. Well, that sort of fits in with single location movies that take place yeah. in one location. I know. Yeah. Um. Let's see. We've got um, things bursting from stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Great creature eruptions. <laughs> yeah, great creature er eruptions. That sounds. <laughs> what I feel like that will be a hard list to put together. Yeah. Right. Um. Oh dear. Slug, slug creatures, but that that kind That's of falls into parasites. Great parasites. Yeah. yeah. Uh. But, um, well, and, and so I I don't know. I've been holding back things like body horror, uh, like things related to body horror because I feel like we're going to be get dealing with this for a lot of movies. How about deadly kisses? Because <gasps> then that gives it doesn't have yeah. to be 
you know, a parasite jumping out of one mouth into the other. It could just be something else. Oh, it could I love be it. bad lipstick or something. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there we go. Yep. For shivers, we've got movies that take place in one location, great parasites, and deadly kisses. Oh, I don't one. even know which one I want to do. <laughs> How right? will I put my thumb on the scale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh so funny. okay. All right. Well, that's it. That's, that's it. That's the list. Nice list. So everybody who wants to vote, uh, you need to be a, a Patreon supporter and you can jump into the concessionaire channels where, or the, what is it? The concessionaire. It's, it's a series it's of channels sh- for concessionaire show patron talk. members. Yeah. It's in the show talk channel yeah. in the concessionaire uh, right. branch of channels. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You said it. Jump in there. Get your vote cast by next Friday, and then we will um, we will put our lists together based on whichever um, whichever option wins for next week's Saturday matinee. Oh dear, I'm very excited about this one. I feel a nightmare on Elm Street coming on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's one long tongue. Oh dear, oh. indeed, indeed. Thank you, uh, everybody, for hanging out with us this fine Saturday morning. Uh, Let's go get our weekend started, Andy. Let's do it. Hondo!